Our bodies are made up of trillions of cells that interact to perform complicated functions and build complex structures. For this to happen, cells need to be able to stick to other cells or to the mesh of support fibers that make up the extracellular matrix. One of the key families of cell receptors responsible for these activities is the integrins. They play roles in embryonic development, cell signaling, immune cell migration, and blood clotting. There are also a number of diseases linked to integrin malfunction or deficiency, from bleeding disorders to immune conditions. Thanks to groundbreaking research, we now understand how these receptors work and how to intervene when things go wrong. In the 1970s, scientists Richard Hines and Erki Ruschlati wondered how cancer cells differ from normal cells. They independently found a protein that binds to the surface of normal cells, but was missing in cancer cells. Something seemed to connect this protein to activities inside the cells, so they started looking for a potential receptor. At the same time, biochemist Timothy Springer was also looking for receptors, but ones involved in cell-cell interactions among immune cells. His research later revealed receptors on macrophages and T cells. In the early 80s, Rochlati identified a short amino acid sequence that allowed fibronectin to bind to cells. This discovery helped him and Heinz identify the cellular receptor for fibronectin that lay across the membrane. Heinz named it integrin, and by 1987, sequencing work by Rochlati, Heinz, and Springer had revealed that these seemingly disparate receptors were actually structurally related. Each was composed of two proteins that span the cell membrane, connecting the extracellular matrix or other cells to the internal molecular skeleton. From here, research in the field took off, and scientists have now found a total of 24 integrins in mammals, made up from different combinations of 18 alpha and 8 beta subunits. These receptors are also highly conserved in animals, and are proposed to have allowed multicellular life to evolve. A number of diseases related to integrin malfunction have now also been characterized, with treatments available for ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and multiple sclerosis, with many more under investigation. Thanks to work from Heinz, Rochlati, Springer, and many more, we now have a greater understanding of how our cells interact and how we might help patients when things go awry.